Hello. So we are back. Tuesday, and I'm back from holiday, but only for one week. After that, I'll go back on holiday. Yeah. So let's start fixing something. Yeah. What about a laptop? We have so many jobs here. I fixed some some of the jobs yesterday, but still are a lot. So what do we want to be fixed today? Phones. We do have few phones. Uh, okay, not this, not this, not today. Aces not displaying. Probably is the screen. I want just um, a motherboard job. Not charge. <laughs> Not charging. Okay. We do have a job. You see, this this is a funny job, and I'll explain why it's funny. If a laptop is dead. The customer will say is because uh, of the charging port. If a TV is dead, the customer will say is because of of a fuse. I have a charger here. You know what? Yeah, found it. Okay, maybe it's time for another chair. Maybe it's time for another chair. Yeah. So that's what normally will happen. When I see a job was booked in for a charging port, and also this comes from another computer show, and I look on the charging port, and the charging port looks fine. If the charging port looks fine, 100% is not a charging port job. But... You got the point, yeah? They send the jobs here and say, "Look, this is a charging port. We have we we want to fix the charging port." Because that's the problem. That's what the customer said. But it's never the charging port. Not never. Most of the cases it's not the charging port. So, we are plugging the charger and we have no light. If you have no light, something is wrong there. Let's check the voltage with the multimeter. So, checking the voltage of the charger, and we have 2 volts. No, sorry, 19.8. You can see there on the multimeter, the middle one, 19.8. So, the charger is good. So, uh, I don't think it's the charging port because the charging port is looking fine. It's not broke can be the wire can be but I don't think are the wires so most likely it's a motherboard job so this is not a normal customer it's a guy who has a computer shop he's bringing here what he can't fix that's weird because a charging port is easy to be replaced especially on the HP laptops when you have the charging port with the connector and you can order the charging port and you can replace it like anyone can do it but who knows I don't believe you know you just think you to have a, a computer shop you'll send a charging port job here no No, but he's trying to play on the hand, you know. He's trying to, it doesn't work.
so he has to pay the price for a motherboard repair if we can fix the motherboard because no light on the charger means your super io which is the starter chip it has no voltage or is dead or is burnt <laughs> yeah and that's bad so it has no voltage because from some reason your 3.3 is missing your 19 volts is missing or it's shorted and that's the reason why you don't have 3.3 or it's you have 3.3 but he, the chip is dead so only this reason can be there okay yeah definitely this laptop was open before some screws are missing Okay. Yeah, I think we have more screws here. One is here. Impossible, we have one here. Yeah. So let's see if we can fix it quickly. Plastic clips, okay, be careful, you have some ribbon cables, the touchpad, the keyboard, and you have the power button, yeah. What model is? It's a HP. Uh, let me check, HP. Model. 15-P247SA. I don't think it's an old one. Just looking on the processor is the new one. We probably with the chipset inside. Yeah, so the laptop is open. We have the Super IO here, it's an IT Super IO. Everything looks fine. A little bit of dust, but that's that's okay. Yeah, so let's plug the charger. I can't see any power supply here, so this is a new one. It's a new board. So if you check here, it's no coil, no MOSFETs, nothing on this side of the board. So we have to take out the board to check the to check the 19 volts power rail. Let's plug the charger. Let's do some checkings. Maybe it is maybe it, it is the charger port. Who knows? Maybe the people they checked already and yeah. Minus plus and we have the charging board. You see the charging board here? You have some glue. So the wires cannot get broken like from the charging port movement. And the charging port goes to the connector here on the board. So usually the, the power tracks are like pairs, like two red, two blacks, like two plus, two minus, just to be able to carry more amps. On our case, you can check the wires. Usually, it's not usually, like, should be like always, but it's not always. Red is plus and uh, black is minus, but no always. Microscope is working. So, yeah, you see the charging cable? That's the charging cable. 
we have two plus here on this side so you see here are, uh, the trucks are together so definitely this is plus and these two tr three trucks three pins are together and it's a big truck this is minus so that's what is important and you have two more wires probably from the from the LED you see it's a LED there on the charging port so let's check with the multimeter the minus plus and and we have nothing so maybe it is a charging port well that's the life we'll do a charging for replacement jobs and uh, we'll start something else after what do I want to check something I want to check if I take out this connector if I have uh, 19 volts because you have a it is a possibility you know uh, if the motherboard is shorted like uh, you can uh, think if the charging port is faulty but actually it's not actually you have a short there so let's check straight on the connector plus minus okay on the connector you can see on the multimeter 19.8 so we do have voltage on the connector so the charging port is good exactly what I told you so the charging port is good but when you plug the connector you have a short on the board so what I will do now I'll leave that connector on one side I'll take out the charger because we don't need the charger right now I'll set up the power supply 19 volts around 2 amps 2 point something amps ground I'll put the ground on my screw you know just to make the thing uh, simple sorry so we have a ground screw here you see ground around that screw so we can stick the ground here yes and now we have only one wire to play okay now let's come with the power supply on the same place like the charging port and see if the motherboard is shorter yeah you can have let's say you have a dodgy charger and uh, you have like 19 volts but you have absolutely no current from some reason yeah we found that kind of charger so when you plug the charger the voltage goes down because of the charger but with the power supply we can check if there is a short or not so plus here and look on the power supply 2.3 amps and the voltage look on the voltage yeah voltage 3.9 volts yeah one more time yeah Okay, well, give me one second, one second.
I'm really sorry, yeah? So you see, the power supply is talking, yeah? You just have to know the language, okay? So, power supply here, one more time. 2.3 amps, because 2.3 amps is the limit. We can lower the current, yeah? 2 amps, yeah? 2 amps. 3.8 volts. That 3.8 volts comes from the ohm law. Okay? So because of the re resistance of the circuit, the voltage get dropped to 3.8. But one more thing. What about ground? Ground. On ground, the power supply is the same. It's limiting the current. You see 2 amps there. But the voltage is 0 0.02. So, uh, it's same. It's same. Same like connecting here the power supply and shorting this to the ground. So, check now. Now it's 0 0.05 volts. And when I take this, it's like 4.1 volts. So what does it mean? It means it is a short, but not very short. <laughs> if you know what I mean. So the short has uh, a little bit high resistance. So I will say probably it's not like zero, 0 ohms, like 0 ohms. It's probably like 0 0.6, 0 0.7 ohms. Okay. And uh, that make me... Uh, Make, you know, is the next next question is how this is possible to be like partial shorted. Because if you know the input circuit, you don't have really too much things on the, on the connected on the ground. You have one MOSFET and after you have the second MOSFET and you have the current uh, resistor. And after that you have the main 90 volts power L. So maybe, or just maybe, this resistance, yeah, comes from uh, a further short yeah you have first mosfet and you have a short to ground that can explain or you have first mosfet second mosfet and after that you have a short to ground and that can explain this resistance yeah obviously we don't know where that track is going but obviously it's not on this side of the board but we know for sure our short is partial shorted or we have a full short like zero ohms but it's further after the first and second MOSFET so for that we have to we have to take out the board because I can't see anything here is no MOSFET, no power supply, like nothing so you understand, yeah? you understand the power supply what the power supply is saying If you use the, if you apply the ohm law, you can actually can find precise the resistance, but that will not help you. How how can help me if I found exactly what resistance is there? No, it will not help me. What is helping me is I know for short, for sure. I know for sure here is no zero ohms. So we don't have like a close shore to ground circuit. It's somewhere far further or it's something partial shorted. Yeah. But we'll see now, we'll see now, we'll see now. Let me take out the board. Actually, the laptops are very simple. Most of the faults, they happen here. 19 volts power L on 3.3 or sometimes 5 volts. Sometimes a shorted uh, USB port. Okay, so the, the board is out. And the board is looking good. It's not like, it's a lot of dust. But it's not like uh, water damage or something. So what we can see here, the power... Uh, 
we have the the connector we can check something more yeah so taking the multimeter ohms yeah i'll know the diode because i i know are some people funny with diode mode but get used to work only with, with diode mode well let's do it with ohms so we can check same connector yeah on same connection plus and minus if we what resistance we have to ground yeah like 0 0.6 mega ohm so that's impossible the short to be here yeah so just think you have a short here but if you check by resistance is like 0 0.6 0 0.6 mega ohms 600 kilo ohms and if you're like a beginner you'll be like what like 600 kilo ohms and it's short it's taking like two amps because the short is after a semiconductor like a diode okay so the short is not here so what we can check we can check where this track is going so where is going can go you see we have here some random mosfets we know coil yeah here we have a coil with a mosfet this can be the power supply to, which can charge the battery can be but here we have like two mosfets and there is no coil so probably that's my input mosfets but we can check not the webcam so i will use Hmm. How can I do it? Oh, it's not the one. We use the diode. More easy. So plus, so plus I said is here, yeah? That's what I said is here. Yeah. Here, I'll keep this here. And I will check all these four pins are together. So check on the multimeter, it's zero. You can see on the multimeter on the screen it's zero. So that's mean this truck is go is coming here. Yeah. So this is my first MOSFET. <coughs> After that, the output of the MOSFET, you can see on the MOSFET it's easy, it's simple. You have four pins together here. That's the input. Four pins together. They it's just one pin of the MOSFET. But they connect that pin to four pins just to carry more current and are also cooling down the the MOSFET. So four here, three here on the output, and one which is gate. So if this is output, so here we should have 19, and this is going here. This is another MOSFET, it's a big one. This is the second MOSFET. And you can see after the second MOSFET, I can bet this is the output because it's coming to this current sensor, current resistor. And from here, I should have 90 volts everywhere. What we can do now, but just now, we can switch the microscope on the, uh, the sorry, the multimeter on ohms, and we can check with the ground. So one more time, ground. And this is the input. This I already we checked. 120 kilohms on this side. If we spin this, it's like 600 kilohms. Same thing, like 16, 20 mega ohms. You understand, yeah? Now checking after here. We have like. 2.9 ohms okay that's bad 2.9 is still a lot and and the output of this one and the output of this one is like okay let me switch on on the diode mode so I'll, actually the output of the second mosfet is shorted and my main power rail is not shorted. Uh, I think my lesson going on a different direction. So I was I was betting 
my main 19 volts probably it's a capacitor that is shorted but it's not it's not that case so you can see the output of the second MOSFET is not shorted to ground so the only short here is between the MOSFETs here which also this is stupid I swear I swear now now I get angry this is so stupid and I will explain why yeah so it's not it's not the only connection you have here between these two MOSFETs but also is going on the diode diode which here is ground because we have the minus of the cap so it's a big truck so here is ground here is plus this is a stupid diode it's a center diode if I check the diode it's zero ohms okay let me explain why a center diode it's a very precise thing a protection on a center diode is fantastic and uh, it's that kind of protection it will protect once and that's all you know when the, the voltage will rise the diode will get shorted and it, it will protect your uh, your thing why stupid i seen these di center diodes if you check a schematic like an iphone schematic on the data lines that's great you know your phone will not be able to communicate with the computer if something will happen yeah but the phone will still be working but not on this case so you use a diode to protect the board yeah but you have a dead board now you know what i mean so let's say if I remove the diode and I have a spike like 25 volts and we checked before 25 volts the laptop will still work fine because they are switching power supply the laptop can can still be alive you know in the worst case you have a shorted MOSFET okay but using a tenor diode on the main power rail that's that's sick that will make your laptop a hundred percent dead is the second time when I find something like that this is so stupid I don't even know what diode is this PJ 501k it's not even important we don't need it actually what you know the electronics from this laptop it doesn't need that diode that diode is meant to make your laptop dead if you try to use a different charger or I don't know stupid stupid so you think that diode is make is, is there to protect your laptop is, is, it, it just make your laptop dead you have to pay me money to fix it there's no protection there It's stupid to use a center diode on the main power head. It's so stupid. Childish. Yeah. Let's check now for short. Here and here. And we have no short, you can see, it's 0 0.5. So it's not short. So the problem was the diode. I have one more video with this fault. One more video. I made it before. It's so stupid to use that center diode when you have, you know, you, you have switching power supply. Meant, if you, if you take any driver, it's meant to work, let's say, from like 12 volts up to 30 volts. You know, it's meant to be like that. We checked before, remember, we test the laptop. And the laptop was working from like 15 volts up to 25. We make some testing. Remember, when I made that video, let's burn the laptop. And I couldn't burn it. What can I say? 
I don't know what designer HP has, but you know, this is a moral thing. So actually with your diode, you kill the laptop. Let's say you don't have the diode and you have a spike like 50 volts. A hundred volt spike. It will kill the laptop anyway. Like same like your diode. But your data is safe. It's on the hard drive. So anytime you can take the hard drive out. But usually, like on this case, probably the charger goes up to like... Probably that center is like 20 volt center. And uh, the voltage goes up to 21, 22, and the center gets got shorted. Stupid. It's very stupid, very, very, very stupid. You know, I was doing this when I was a kid, you know, protecting the circuits with that center diode. You can do it on your things, but you can't do it, you know, on a laptop. You know what I mean? You have switching power supplies, which are meant to compensate any voltage variation on the input and on the output, you know? any load any you know, that, that's the reason why, why you are, we are using switching power supplies it's just stupid so I'll, on my on my my fault list I will classify this like the first like the top one this is so stupid Let's try and test together now. Let's plug the charger. So I understand this kind of protection. It's an diode. And some situation, like the line on the iPhone input. On the iPhone data lines, there are tenor diodes. Because in case, you know, something wrong happened there, or high voltage coming from there, uh, you can have a dead phone. It's not like a laptop, you can take out the hard drive and move your data. So the charger is plugged and we have straight away, we have the light. The, you can see the light on the charger. The LED is on. And if we try to power up, that's the power button. Let's see which one is. Yeah, far two pins from the right here. Yeah? And the laptop is working fine. Obviously, oh, it is the it is hard drive inside. It's loading the windows, but it's kind of stupid, you know. Using a center diode, or using a center diode on a, on a line which is meant to like to have high voltage, low voltage. That main power, the main power, like nineteen volts, is nineteen when it's plugged in. When it's it's from the battery. The battery voltage is coming on the same 19 volts power L, which will be like 14 volts power L. So that power L is meant to have different voltage. But only HP can do something like that. I never found on different brand. Only HP can do it. So it's not like, you know, okay, give me a chance, give me a chance. If something goes wrong, just give me a chance. Maybe the laptop will survive. And they keep saying, no, 
If something goes wrong, your laptop will go dead. I will not give you a chance. That's the story. You know what, I'll stop this video because I'll put back together. The laptop is working. And you know what, let me explain it. You know how easy it is for a charger, the voltage to rise up. So you have, you have like a old charger which cap capacitor are, are like dried. And the voltage goes up with no current, no current just the voltage goes up and nothing will happen wrong like you plug the charger the voltage goes low but in this case when you have a center diode that extra voltage it will burn the the, the diode it's just stupid okay so I'll stop here I'll put all back together thank you for watching like and subscribe if you like the video very important and see you on the next one Maybe I can find something uh, more interesting. Yeah? Thank you. Bye.